Hello and welcome to 5 minutes tutorial on RF Pro. In this tutorial, we will talk about creating component models for RF Pro and I will introduce a pretty nice utility called Component Library Model Tool in ADS. Before we start, remember 1, 2, 3, subscribe to the channel, enable the notifications, like and share the video with your friends and colleagues. All right, let's go ahead and spend next few minutes in talking about this great utility, which will be very helpful if you're dealing with the complex RF ports. Now, what we are trying to discuss in this video is like this. So you have a component model, and in the previous videos, we have talked about having lumped model as parameter and model database. Now, model database is a pretty useful you know, concept whereby you can use the vendor library components directly. However, the little side effect of that is you are limited by the amount of components you have available in this library. Now, there are many times you are using some other vendor or even with Morata, you're using some series which is not listed here. So in that case, what can you do? Well, the answer to that problem is use a library cell method. Using library cell method, you can leverage the schematic view of this component and whatever components you place in that view, whether it is uh, XYZ vendor, or you create your own equivalent circuit model or have a measured S parameter file, all that can directly be used inside RF Pro. Now, because it is going to be part of your workspace database, then manual modification also will not be needed. The assignment will be all automatic, no matter which component you you know, pull into RF Pro for analysis. Now let's go through that complete process and see how all these things work. So first of all, I'm going to create a new workspace in the directory. Now in this workspace, I'm simply going to import a BRD file. If you want, you can also do the same thing with ODB++ file. So when you import either ODB++ file or a BRD file, the entire PCB database gets imported into ADS, all the component, uh, all the nets, all the stack up, edit, you know, layers and everything. Now, I already talked about modifying the stack up and so on in one of the earlier videos, so I'm not going to you know, spend any time in that. Now here in the main layout design, you can see the complete assembly. Now at this point, if you want, you can go to RF Pro and start setting up the simulation as you want. But the question is what I'm going to do with the component models because all the components which you get after importing only contains the layout footprint or the port information. They have no circuit equivalence. So when you try to add these elements as a schematic elements in RF Pro, there is no schematic model. And that is where this component library utility comes into you know, picture and it's very helpful. So let's see how to use it. So if you go to tools, component model library tool, it's a two-step process. First, we need to create a map for all the components so that tool can extract the values of these components to a certain what kind of schematic model will be needed and what value will be assigned to that model. And here you can only see the component cell if you want so that you don't end up messing up any other design which you might have created. Now, depending on the PCB, you know, fab house or the design house, different people have different way of naming these, um, you know, components. And sometimes they use a pretty weird logic which tool cannot decode. If that happens during map file creation, you will get few warnings and we will go through all that. So once you have selected all the components you want, and you can deselect any components you don't want to work with or don't want to create a schematic or a symbol view uh, behind the scenes. So that's absolutely fine. So you can pick and choose what components you want. Click OK, and now a mapping file will be created to map the cell with the associated type of model and the value. And here you can see I get quite a few warning because this syntax was not being able to resolve by the tool which we are working, and that's absolutely fine. Now, if you want to see the map file which gets created, if you go to library view under the library, let's explore in the file system. And here at the bottom, you will find model underscore map database file. And this file you can't open in a notepad editor or anything like that, but you could download a program called DB browser from internet and install it. So this is like a database browser, which can read the database file syntax. It's a, basically an SQL kind of syntax. And here under browse data, you can see the cell name and the value which tool was able to identify. Now, if the value was not properly extracted, 
you can always select that and now you can make the modification and update the values once you are done hit apply and this way you can keep correcting all the values which were not able to which tool was not able to identify properly once you have everything updated simply write changes so that you update the model map file and once you have the file updated we go to step number two of creating the components so here with component model maker you can see all the cells and what kind of schematic model will be used a capacitor series rlc there are few components for which there will be no model and that will be created by the tool for inductor series rl and so on and so forth so once you're happy click ok and now all the components in your workspace will have a schematic view and an associated symbol view so now you can go and check all the components as schematic and symbol view and once that happens in our main board design we can go ahead and launch rf pro and once the rf pro is launched this complete design database will be read into the tool that means it will have all the schematic information whenever you have component defined as a circuit role so let me explain that as soon as the the complete database is up in RF Pro. So once you have the database, if you expand to components, you can see all the components are listed here. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn all these components to circuit type, because this tells the tool, I need to treat them as a circuit model. And once you add this circuit model into your analysis, if you have a library cell view active, that means you have the schematic view active, that will be simply used as a circuit rule or a model. So here, for example, let me pick these two inductors, which we used previously as well, and you simply add them here. And now if you double click, you can see the model is defined as library cell. That means it is going to use the schematic view of the component, which we just created. So once it is done, you can proceed with the regular simulation, port creation, and so on. And once your simulation or the analysis is complete, you can of course go and create a schematic view. For example, here, I do have the exactly the same setup with two components, and here you can see the library cell mode is active. And once we create a test bench out of this design, you can see in the EM circuit COSIM schematic for place of inductors, you have these schematic cells. And if you push inside, you basically have the same circuit component which you created. So this kind of view can also be created manually. And now at this point, if you want to replace it with Murata, TDK, or ATC, AVX, any kind of library component, simply deactivate it and place your own component if you have that library added. Or if you have an S parameter file, you can replace this guy with S parameter file. The utility has already done the bulk of its job, and that was to create a schematic and symbol view for multiple components which you have without you having to you know, mod manually do it. So that's the great part about this utility, and all the information which you have can now directly be used inside RF Pro for setting up these kind of analysis. Simplifying your work, my friends. All right, so that's all for this video. I hope you like the content presented and some of this will be very useful in your practical design work. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos on RF Pro. Wish you all the best in your design. Keep watching, keep learning.